large, high-powered cloud chuck devices. Large, high-powered cloud chuck devices that are rebuildable platformed as well. Large, this, this goes on a bit longer, large, high-powered cloud chuck devices that are quad battery I think you know what I'm going to be reviewing now. That are, well, apart from looking at the title, that's obvious, but I've had far too much tea today, folks. I just thought I'd warn you right now, but large, high-powered cloud chuck devices that are quad battery based. There's not a lot of them out there, and most of the quad battery mods that you see on the market generally do tend to be mechanical. Apart from this, this is the Titan Combo Pack and it's the Steamcrave Titan 1.5 PWM mod, full protection, voltage based, and then you get the Titan 2 tank, which comes in the box as well. This is one for all you people that like lots and lots and lots of vapor being produced. In fact, so much vapor being produced, if you were to use this outside, general onlookers would think there's a storm cloud surrounding you, yeah. It's been out for a little while now, this thing. Uh, the UK reviewers were the second wave of reviewers to get their hands on this. A lot of the American reviewers got it first, but Steam Crave are now going round to the uh, UK and EU reviewers with the same Titan combo pack. So, how does this thing perform? And more importantly, we know what this performs like because I've already reviewed this, but what about the tank? because it's going up against the original Titan 1. How's it going to perform? Only one way to find out. It's time for a kit review! Okay, th this, this is the, hold on. This is the zoom pulled all the way out. Th this is a big kit uh, for the people. For the people that are relatively new to vaping, that have only started vaping in the past six or seven months, there's one company, one company that stands out from all the others as basically the company that says, fuck you, we're gonna make things big. We don't care what the market opportunities are. We don't care where the rest of the market is going. When we make something, we make it big. And that company is these folks, Steam Crave. And I've been reviewing for, I've been reviewing for Steam Crave right all the way back since 2015 when the original Steam Crave Aroma Miser RDTA version 1 came out. Back then, nobody paid any attention to Steam Crave because, hey, they were a brand new company. Now, Steam Crave are one of the bigger players in the market, especially for the hobbyist side of the market. Now, we're not going to concentrate too much on this, which is the Steam Crave Titan PWM 1.5. And the reason for that is we've looked at this before. Uh, it's the same Titan 1.5, the same screen, the same. I don't know why they did that with the button. But for the people that haven't watched the review of this, again, pinned comment down in the description, if I remember to actually do it, which I probably won't, but yeah, pinned comment down in the description will link you to the actual standalone review of the PWM 1.5. But for a quick overview, this, if I ever get the bloody battery door open, this is a quad battery setup. So it's four batteries in parallel series, negative, positive, so parallel series, but it's not a mechanical because it does have a screen on it. So it's pulse width modulation, PWM, and it's basically based off of variable voltage, but there is a wattage reading on it, so you know what wattage you're roughly gonna get. This is serious power here, folks, serious power. And it kind of, it kind of is the safer version of the Hammer of God. Um, again, I've reviewed the Hammer of God at the end of last year, the Hammer of God Classic XL, and this is kind of the safer version of a Hammer of God mech because you do have protection in here with the chipping board at the very top, but this is a big mod. This is a seriously big mod. Yeah, Titan, PWM 1.5. What we're gonna be concentrating on, however, 
Big tank. But so was the original. Yeah, we're looking at the Titan version 2. Designed by BJ She, who's been the same designer for Steam Crave all the way back since 2015. They've had the same designer all the way through. And this is the brand new version 2 of the original Titan Tank. Again, I reviewed that a couple of years ago. So starting at the very top, you've got the rather nice drip tip or mouthpiece in this case. Full 810 connection, as you would expect for the size of the tank. Filling the tank up is very, very easy. Knurled bit at the top. Give it a twist and it will unscrew off with massive fill holes. You can just get the top of your bottle, take the top of the bottle off and just pour the juice in. Because trust me, you'll need to be the size of this tank. So huge fill holes at the very top here. You also have the lock and unlock. So that, let's see if we can get this to actually, can we do this? Okay, this is a unlocked and open. Keep an eye right there as I twist this round. See that? Juice flow control. So you've got full juice flow control on this. And it is advisable when you're filling this tank up to close the juice flow off because you're going to be spending a bit of time filling this tank up, folks. Close the juice flow off. That way you don't get leaking down at the bottom end. You then, of course, have the airflow control here. So if we grab this airflow control ring and give this a twist, what we've got going on here is single slot single slot on the opposite side. Then you've got double slot, double slot on the opposite side. Then you've got the fully wide open slots and fully wide open slots on the opposite side as well. And then you've got this part down here, which unscrews, oops. And this is where the deck pops in and pops out. Now what we're gonna do is do a very quick comparison between this tank and the original Titan that got released about a year and a half ago. So this is the Titan with the extension glass on it. And immediately you can all, you can see immediately where the major difference is on the outside of the tank is. On the old one, the juice flow control was down here at the base because they had a lock seal system at the base of the actual tank. On the new version, the juice flow controls at the top underneath the main tank. Airflow control, there isn't much of a difference going on here uh, with the way that the ring actually works, but because if you, if you look at this side by side, the airflow control ring is in roughly the same position. That's why there's not much of a difference. They've kept the airflow control ring in the same position, but the airflow itself has changed. And the original Titan, you had this just gaping wide open hole, and this thing's not turning because it's bone dry. There we go. You had this gaping wide open hole with, of course, the honeycomb punch through. You've got the honeycomb punch through going on in this, but as you can see, it's a lot wider to cover more area. That is a hint to the differences with the deck. And more importantly, the accessory deck that comes with the Titan 2 compared to the Titan 1. You then had the slot airflow like that, which is very similar to the slot airflow, which is going on here with, if I get this thing to turn round, which is going on dry O-rings. This is why dry O-rings on tanks are a nightmare because airflow control runs off of O-rings. There we go, similar to the slot airflow that's going on there, but again, this one is wider. And then you've got the punched holes. If we pop this open and we have a look at what's going on with the decks, pop you off, pop you off. So. There's the deck, the standard deck from, and I've left two coils in this, the standard deck from the original Titan. Let's zoom this in so we can get a good look at that. Postless deck, nothing much has changed with the postless deck system from the old Aromamizer Supremes as well. So here's the standard deck that comes with the Titan 2. And if we line these up side by side, you can see the general idea is roughly the same for the decks, it's roughly the same. So you've got coil, coil, and then you've got the middle part here for a big chunky single coil. They've altered the layout slightly on the Titan 2 standard deck compared to the Titan 1, but the idea is still generally the same. So let's take the Titan 1 stuff 
and put this over to one side and we're going to concentrate now on the inside of the Titan II. Now, this is an RDTA. RDTAs have lost their meaning slightly from the original inception of RDTAs back in 2015 with this company because it was Steamcrave that invented the RDTA. And what RDTA stands for is Rebuildable Dripping Tank Atomizer. And the reason it's called that is very simple. Traditional tanks, traditional tanks are a completely different layout to what you're seeing here. What you're seeing here, instead of the air coming from the bottom, which is what traditional tanks generally tend to do, traditional RTAs, they get their air from the bottom and it's the base of the coil that's hit with the air. What the RDTA idea did with the original aromizer from Steamcrave back in 2015 is bring the air in from the side because if we open this airflow up fully, just crank this open, what you're seeing here, see that? You're looking right into the chamber. So the deck slips in like that. And you will see the coil once we actually put up, once we actually coil this thing. You can see all the way through it. See it? There's the table. You're seeing all the way through it. And this is why it became, or why it got called a rebuildable dripping tank atomizer. Because at the time, drippers of the era, 20, 2014, 15, and 16, were mostly side airflow. This took a tank, made the deck to be as easily coilable and wickable as a dripper deck, and brought the air in from the side to hit the coil as a side airflow deck system rather than a bottom airflow tank system. And it was the original Aromamizer way back in 2015 that did this. And this same idea has carried all the way through the various tanks from Steam Crave up till now. Dual wall chamber they've got going on here. So the inner wall here has got the airflow holes punched all the way out to the outside. The inner wall itself, though, has got juice intake here, juice intake here. And if we pop this in here, the juice floods in from these two holes, hits the base plate, and then you've got wick port, wick port. And that's the way the thing actually wicks. It wicks from the, it wicks from the underside. This whole bottom chamber in here, this whole plate here, gets flooded in liquid flooded in liquid, and all that liquid has only got two places to go after that, which is here and here, so when you're wicking this up, you wick it like a dripper. You stuff the side bits with cotton, and that's you done and dusted. So this is the standard configuration for this particular kit. However, with the combo kit, and I think with the Titan and its retail packaging, although I'm not sure, you get this. Aromamizer Titan Dual Series Mesh Deck Kit. Why is it called Dual Series Mesh Deck Kit? Well, let's crack this open and see what's actually in here. So you get your little pole thingy, which you use to basically wrap your uh, wrap your um, your mesh round. You also get this, which is the airflow director. You get this, which is the deck, and then you get this, which is a whole bunch of little mesh inserts. So this one is, are you gonna focus on Canthal A1 Square? Let's zoom this in. Supreme, Pulse at 20, power range 40, uh, 40 to 85. Titan, Pulse at 40, power range 40 to 160. This is Canthal A1 Square. This one is stainless steel 316 if you want to use temp control with your Titan. Uh, why the hell you'd want to do that? I don't know. But yeah, so you've got stainless steel and then you've got Canthal A1. The Canthal A1 mesh is a much finer mesh comparing it to the stainless steel. The deck. Seeing this? Two clamps. or oh, two clamp sets. Mesh loop here. Mesh loop here. Wick running all the way through. This is a dual mesh deck, and this is the one we're going to be using to test this tank out, folks, just for a bit of fun. So let's pop this on a build platform. Steve, Steve Dilligaff Porter Piston Atty Stand from Steve Dilligaff Porter over on Facebook, obviously. Pull the zoom out, and let's just unscrew you. This is going to be very easy to coil on because all we're dealing with here is two mesh strips. It's going to be very easy to coil on. 
pull that out. So let's just drag you out, drag you out, pop you out, and pop you out. We're going to be going with Canthal for this one, folks. So Canthal E1 square. Now I need to peel off the damn sticker. They actually sent a spare pack, which is what most rebuildable manufacturers do, do especially when they're dealing with mesh. They actually sent a spare pack of uh, spare pack of mesh strips, and it's the spare pack I've been using to test this Titan out. So what I'm going to do here is actually use the mesh strips that the tank actually comes with. If I can ever get this bloody package open. <laughs> Seriously? Why is this not coming off? I hate these little plastic packages. There we go. Right. So you get two mesh strips with each package. Let's just pop you out. There's one out. There's the other one out. Finally, I hate those little plastic packages. Now, what we're going to do here is you've got the cutout going on here. And what we're going to do is get one of these mesh strips. We are going to put that right in the middle and then we're going to bend that over just like that. Bend that over. I'm going to roll this around. Roll it back and forth and that way you know that it's actually formed. There's one mesh half loop, pop that to one side. And we're going to do the same with the other one. Make sure it's sitting squared and then bend it over and then give that a roll with the finger and thumb to make sure everything is lined up. Now we're going to pop this in. So that one goes in here like that. And we're going to make sure See that, that metal strip that you're seeing there? That's the part that the clamp clamps onto. So we're going to clamp this one down. Oh, hold on. There we go. That's one side down. Same with the other side. Just clamp this down. Like that. That's looking good to me. Then we get the second mesh loop. Pop that in there. Make sure that's lining up. Screw that down. And then we screw the other side down. Look at that. Two mesh loops on the one deck. Now, we're not going to be using this to dry burn things because that's just taking the piss. What we're going to be doing, we're going to be using a little bit more regulation with this one, folks. Let's screw this on to the Red Stag DNA 200 build tab that I've got here. La, 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 la. Come on. There we go. We're going to be bumping this up just a touch. 25 watts should be more than enough. And you want it to just glow just for a second and then let it go. You don't want to over glow a mesh strip. 25 watts is more than enough. You've seen a little bit of what is essentially smoke burning off. That's the oils from fingerprints that's been stuck on to the mesh loop. You want to burn that off before you actually uh, wick the thing up. So we're gonna just, in fact, you know what? No, we're not, we're gonna use this stuff. Not a sponsor, but I like using their cotton. So, this is going to be, again, very easy because we're dealing with a mesh deck here. All we need to do is peel off a fair chunk of this cotton here. Around about that much. Is that going to be enough? Yeah, that's going to be enough. So, we're going to get our bit of cotton gods here. We're going to floof this up a little bit. Just tease it out a tiny bit. Get one end. Pinch and twist. Just like that. And we're going to feed this through. Just feed it through and keep feeding it through. Give it a very slight back and forth. And now what we need is scissors. Let's get these out. And we're going to cut that right there. Level with the edge of 
the actual deck plate. That's a little bit long right there. Now we get our tweezers and we simply get this. Oh, hold on, focus in, thank you. Gonna get this and just treat this like a dropper and drop the cotton straight down onto the juice intake. Just like that. Straight down onto the juice intake. Now, we are going to make sure, before we do anything, we're gonna make sure that there's no dry spots happening on the mesh. So we're gonna soak up everything that's going on here. We're gonna give the mesh loops a good soaking. We're gonna give this a very quick pulse. And we're gonna keep doing that, just feeding the mesh loops. And as we're feeding the mesh loops, because it's heating up the liquid, it's drawing the liquid in to the cotton. To help with the can see it, the ends of the cotton is now starting to get saturated because the heating up of the mesh plates or the mesh, uh, the mesh strips is drawing the liquid in to the cotton. Oh, by the way, I'm using Curious Curdle here from Rochford Project. Just keep firing that. Bit more. We want to make sure the cotton is absolutely saturated before we pop this back into the deck. That's looking good to me because the ends of the cotton is now saturated. We're going to bump this up as if we're gonna vape on it. We're gonna bump this up to around about 50 odd watts and we're gonna check to make sure there is no hot spots. And I'm not seeing any, are you? I'm not. Yeah, that is looking good to me. No hot spots on this deck at all. We're gonna pop the deck off. Like that. Oh, that's a bit on the hot side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get our aroma miser. Take out the classic deck, pop that to one side. And now what we're going to do here is we're going to get the insert, which directs the air a little bit closer to the actual coil. And we're going to pop the insert in here. And as you can see, the insert will just slip in like that, line up roughly with the airflow. In fact, you know what, it'd be easier doing it this way, Vic, yeah, I dare, which is the way that I'm doing it anyway when I'm rebuilding in this. Quickest way to do it, folks, is to get the actual insert and just pop it over the deck like this. Clips into place, and as you can see, that brings the air a lot closer to the actual mesh loops. Then you get the whole kit and caboodle, and you pop it in like that all in place, and there's the cotton showing at the base plate here. Then we get this, and we pop that together. And there we go, folks. That is the Titan with the dual mesh deck all coiled up, wicked up and ready to go. Let's head back up top and chuck some clouds. Yes, and we're back up. Yeah, we're back up top with the Titan 2 combo. So, I don't know if I don't do it. Oh, you never done the Titan. I'd rather, to be honest, I would actually rather do the 200 watt test on the tank rather than the dripper, but goon. Because I know for a fact you want me to do it on the goon. Right, so, is there enough juice on this? Yes, there is. Now, this is a, this is a voltage-based mod, but they do have a wattage readout. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dial in the volts Okay, it's gonna to have to be 4.6, 4.6 volts. Take a look at the wattage readout when I hit the fire button, right? You're gonna focus in, focus in. Fine, don't, let's try it like this. I don't know if you're seeing that, but it is saying 
209 watts on the wattage readout at 4.6 volts. It's a 0.1 ohm set of dual coils I've got in here. That's why the voltage is down low. Anyway. And I'm, I'm just, just in case, I'm not going to take any risks with this. I am popping a little bit more juice in there. Hold on, folks. Just drop a few onto the coils itself. Some onto the deck. That'll do it. So we're off. 4.6 volts, 209 watts with four 18650 batteries freshly off the charger. And we're off. I honestly don't know how people can vape that high. <sighs> Seriously. Right. Oh, I am not doing that again now. No temp control on this, so there's no temp control test. So let's put the big fella on now, the Titan 2 tank. And now we're looking at the Titan 2 combo kit. So here's what I'm going to do here. The original Titan, although it was pushing it a little bit, but the original Titan, I think I, I think I pushed the original Titan tank up to about 160 with the mesh deck. I think I pushed it to 160. We're going to do the same with this. We need to hit 160 first, though. 6.9, that's too high. 6.7 volts. It's coming out at 155 watts, but there we go. 6.7 volts, 155 watts. Now this, uh, should I, uh, I don't know, should I keep the airflow wide open or should I close it off a bit? I'm going to keep the airflow wide open for this one. So here we go, dual mesh loop deck. Airflow control is fully open at 150, 155 watts. And we're off. That is a lot of vapour. That is a scary amount of vapour. Holy crap, how much vapour can a tank produce? And here's the thing, that is a cold vape. It's literally a cold vape, it's not even lukewarm. It's cold, it's like I'm breathing in normal air. The thing about the Titan tanks, and the Titan 1 was exactly the same as this, because the tank was bringing in so much air, so much air, even with a mesh loop or with big chunky coils in there, because the chamber's bringing in so much air, the vape was rather cool. And this is one of the major reasons that there's so many airflow options on this tank, because wide open, you're getting a cold vape. What you need to do is drag the airflow down. And here's what I do with the Titan. I drag the airflow down. If I can get the thing to turn, I drag the airflow down to that setting, which is the single strip. Just the single strip airflow, but fully open. Still at the same wattage and same voltage. And we're off again. Now it's warming up. Now it's a lot warmer. Wow. And there we go, folks. That was the up close and personal of the Steam Crave Titan combo pack. What do I think of this? The eyes and the nose. We're not going to concentrate too much on the mod. We've already looked at the mod in a separate review when the Titan 2 PWM first launched without a tank. The mod came out by itself. It didn't come out with a tank. So... In the description, not, not the description, in the comments, in the pinned comment, if I remember to do it, the separate review for the Titan 2 is going to be up there for you to click on and look at. What we're going to concentrate on is this. Now, there is some differences between this tank and the original release of the first Titan. <clears throat> More so when it comes to the technical side of things for this tank. What you're basically looking at here, if you were going to compare this side by side to the original Steam Crave Titan, 
What you're looking at here is more of a Titan 1.5. Some of the niggling problems that plagued the original Titan is now fixed with this particular version of the Titan tank. It's a much more sleeker looking. I mean, where did I put the Titan? I must have, oh, it's behind me. That's what it is. I put it back up on the shelf. There we are. <clears throat> so it's a much more sleeker looking tank compared to the release of the first Titan, especially when it's when you're talking about what's going on down here at the base. If you look at it base for base, the new Titan 2 has been worked on quite a bit, so it doesn't look as, I suppose you can call it industrial looking, that the original Titan looked like. There is a lot of work that went on to rejigging the airflow and rejigging the juice flow control in the Titan 2 compared to the original Titan version 1. And more importantly, the accessory side of things for the Titan 2 with the new dual mesh loop deck compared to the single mesh loop deck that came out originally for the Titan 1 puts the Titan 2 ahead. But here's the thing though, <clears throat> for people that aren't really going to use the Titan 2 for mesh, and for people that are going to use the Titan 2 for general everyday coils, like staple stagger fuse, fuse, clapton, that kind of thing, are you going to get much of a difference in flavour between the Titan 1 and the Titan 2? I can tell you right now, no. Both the tanks react very similarly to each other. If you drop in a couple of staple stagger fuse claptons in both the tanks and wick them with the same cotton, put the same juice in both the tanks, making sure, however, that you're running, that you're not running the extension, because I've got the extension on the old Titan one, making sure that you're not running the extension and you're running both tanks as standard. If you do a blind test with a vape friend, they're not going to notice much of a difference between the two tanks, if any. At its core, at its very core, the inner chamber of both the tanks are very similar to each other, and it's the inner chamber that makes the big difference when it comes to flavour. What they've done with the Titan 2 is fix the problems the Titan 1 had. That's basically what they've done. And it's that general tick talk if you're an intel fan you'll know what i'm talking about it's that general tick talk thesis that intel has started doing again with the latest generation of cpus that to be fair steam crave have also been doing with their tanks <clears throat> if you look at the releases of the old aromamizer range tick fully new release they overhauled everything talk same as the previous tank, but they've altered things. They've made the airflow a little bit smoother. They've cleaned up problems with the chamber. They've altered the way the juice flow control works. But on the talk side of things, you're basically looking at a 0.5 version of the previous tank. And that's what you're looking at with the Titan 2. It's a 0.5 version of the original Titan 1. Both of them are phenomenal tanks by themselves, but where the Titan 2 has its edge is with that mesh deck. That's where it's got its edge over the original Titan 1. Plus, I think the Titan 1's been discontinued now. Has it? I think the Titan 1's been discontinued, but as a kit, and this is a big kit, if you're into your high-powered vaping, if you're into the high wattage side of things and you're wanting something that's got a lot of power with a lot of punch, you can't really beat the Steam Crave Titan PWM 1.5 when it comes to a regulated based vape. Sure, you can get the Hammer of God, which this kind of looks like a little bit. You can get the Hammer of God, but the Hammer of God is a full mechanical. There is no safety in the Hammer of God. With this, you've got variable voltage, baseline variable voltage with the protection of the chip and board. You will not get the same kick that you'll get from the Hammer of God, but this is safer. And paired with this tank, 
Oh, you're going to have a very good vape. Again, don't run the tank with the airflow control fully open because the vape is way too cold. Run it on the two slots or the single slot at around about 100 to 120, 130 watts, and you will get a phenomenal vape from this thing. Phenomenal vape. Here we go. Rochford Projects, Curious Curdle in here, and it's a very sharp lemon, very sharp. And there we go, folks. That was the Titan Combo from Steam Crave. If you never bought the original Titan PWM, which I've got sitting here, this is the original one with the plain button, Here's the version 2 with the odd steampunk button thing they've got going. If you never bought the Titan original PWM and you never bought the Titan 1 tank, yeah, yeah, it's tempting, folks. It's definitely tempting. I know that Steam Crave are still selling the original Titan PWM mod, which is this. But the Titan 2, or Titan 1.5, sorry, PWM, is technically a better mod. And the Titan 2 tank, from a technical standpoint, again, is a better tank than the original Titan. If you're into your big, heavy, high-powered mods with big, heavy, high-capacity tanks, this is one for you. Simple as that. Anyway... You can't fault the thing for flavour either. Two mesh loops in this. Of course the flavour's going to be good. Big thanks to the folks at Steam Crave for sending the Titan Combo Pack over for a review. If they thought this review sucked, you know what to do down below. If you thought it was good, give it a thumbs up. Very fast out the top, you've got the latest video, no matter what video you're watching in the channel. I mean, that's latest What's Up Sunday update vlog in the middle. Shout out to the hashtag Flu Farmy, the Patreon subscribe stars, and the YouTube members for supporting Vic Mac financially. And underneath me is the Vic Mac logo. Click on, that to click on that to subscribe. As always, folks, thanks for watching, and have a good one.